And again, I came on in the middle of my good morning. Good morning and happy Sabbath, Hillcrest. Good morning. Good morning. Very good. Please stand and join us in singing our intro. Glory to your name.
your faces. So we're going to go right into the hymn of worship. My hope is built on nothing less. It can be found in your hymnals on page 522, or you may follow it on the screen. in the presence of the Lord. My hope is built on nothing less. Oh man, do I have any help in here today? Than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. Anybody happy that your hope is built on Jesus Christ today? Oh man, I, I need at least three witnesses that, that are not ashamed to establish my hope is not on my job. Help me, Lord. My hope it's not on my income. My hope is not on my family, but my hope is in Jesus. If that's your testimony today, come on, stand to your feet and give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this house. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but a holy lean. On Jesus, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is seeking. Come on, let's sing that chorus. Y'all stop acting like you got some Pentecostalism in you. Come on, say amen. God is good. Who says amen to that today? Yes, Lord. Yes, he Lord. is good and he is worthy to be praised this morning. And we give God praise. I want to welcome you to the hill. Come on, say amen. amen. It goes down right here at the hill. And we praise God for your attendance being here today. I have a couple of things I need to stick a pin in for 
um, us to remember as we go through our worship experience. Uh, we want you to remember that on this coming Wednesday night, come on, say amen. amen. And we have been having a powerful time in the Lord. The Lord has been richly blessing us, and he is teaching us from his word. Come on, say amen. amen. Um, this coming Wednesday night, we'll be back in the house at 630. We want to challenge you to come on time. We we getting right to the word. Come on, say amen. amen. All right. We have a, a few songs that we sing, but we getting right up to the word by 645. We want to be on the word and uh, telling, telling, the, telling the word as it is written. All right. So we want you to be a part of that on this coming Wednesday night. On the next Sabbath. When did I say everybody? Next Sabbath. Next Sabbath is camp meeting Sabbath. All right. Amen. And uh, we are looking for you to be with us at camp meeting. But for those who will not be traveling for a camp meeting, we will uh, bring the camp meeting experience to the hill. Is that all right? Amen. Uh, we're going to be streaming the services live uh, from Oakwood University Church to the Hillcrest Seven Adventist Church. Is that all right? Amen. And so we still want you to be a part of the worship experience. One of our elders uh, will be leading out, um, and we will have the worship experience right here um, at the Hillcrest Church. That's on both of those Sabbath. Um, worship services. They'll be right here streaming live for those who are not with us in Huntsville. Uh, we ask that you keep uh, your pastors in prayer as we go down and pre prepare the grounds for the saints of God. Is that all right? Amen. And uh, we'll be away on Thursday, um, but we'll let you know who to contact uh, in our absence. All right? Amen. Uh, also, um, I'm going to ask that Brother Edwin, Elder Edwin Smith will come very quickly. Uh, and while he's coming, I'm going to ask that Mrs. Jackie Knight and Sean Small will make their way down front. Elder Smith has a, uh, a powerful, powerful program uh, that God has laid on his heart um, to share with the men in our church. And I don't know about you, but it's so good to be a part of a church that have men. Come amen. on, say amen. amen. I didn't say wimps. Come on, say amen out there. I didn't say guys who were trying to figure out their gender. I'm talking about men. Come on, say amen. amen. And uh, Elder Smith, share with us very quickly, what has God laid on your heart as the men's ministry director? Well, get ready, man. Um, we're having men's ministry day um, the last Sabbath in July. We, um, it's going to be a wonderful day. Sean Small is um, um, getting the music for that day prepared for us. We're going to have a seminar that evening. Coming back that night, we're going to have fun and game night for the entire church family. But guess what, men? We're not through yet. Huh? Because the following Sunday, we're going to do Sabbath in the park. Huh? I, at least I thought I would hear some men say amen. amen. We're going to have Sabbath in the park. We'll have music. You're going to bring your tithe and offering because we're going to have somebody from the Treasury Department with us there. Amen. And our own Pastor Hewlett is going to be preaching that day. Amen. So with me, we bring your sunscreen, your flip-flops, your sunglasses, your short pants. We're going to have fun that day. Right. Thank you, Pastor. Also, their tithe envelope. Yeah, the tithe. Yes, yeah, yes, we're yes, going to yes. have that because Michael Jacobs or somebody from the Treasury staff is going to be there. We're going to have a full program. We're going to have fun. Oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you. No women. No women. Yeah, women fix your husband's sack lunch, okay? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Men, let's govern ourselves accordingly. We have um, exactly two months to prepare um, for the men's day and the Sabbath in the park with our men. We have Mrs. Jackie Knight, and uh, we have also Sean Small. And uh, the Lord has laid a powerful um, program on their hearts to share uh, with us here at the Hill. I'm going to ask... Um, if they would just share with us very quickly, what has God shared with you to share with our church family coming up? Well, is it on? Y'all hear me? Okay. Uh, for the next three months, June. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. For the next three months, this is going to be a part of the um, Hillcrest uh, Health Ministry that we have here at church. You know, we're very active. Mm -hmm. And for the next three months, we will be offering once a month um, a health seminar panels that we will be discussing a lot of things that's going on with we the black people right Sean? you want to focus on that um yeah we'll just focus on the one that's coming up next um in the month of june we're going to be talking about diabetes um that is something that affects our people 
particularly, and it's something that we don't usually take care of until it's too late. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure we get a jump on this. So if you if you think your sugar is low, or high, or upside down, or inside out, it really don't matter. Come on out, and we're gonna we're gonna have a, a real good discussion about diabetes and how it affects us specifically. Amen. 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 So that would be June the sixteenth, or is that the fifteenth? That's June, the first June Sabbath 15. that we get back from camp meeting. We will have Sabbath dinner in the auxiliary room, and we have a guest speaker. She's our health educator at Metro General Hospital. Mm -hmm. um, her name is Lanice Nelson, and she is the one that goes around and talks about prevention. And so she's going to come while you're eating a healthy lunch. And before you eat the lunch, we're going to check your blood sugar. Just to see, I said before, just to see if you might be pre-diabetic or, you know, or even if you have it. There is a book we will be giving away, okay. and it's called Goodbye, Goodbye Diabetes. Diabetes. And All that right. is a book that is in the health, food, the health store at the ABC store. Yeah, ABC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're going to give that away to whoever. I don't know how we're going to do it. How going to do it, Sean? We'll, we'll, we'll think of something creative okay. to give. <laughs> All right. Thank right. you. We're, we're grateful for um, our church family taking uh, some initiative to help us to be healthy Christians. Is that all right? I, and I can't figure out, you medical people maybe can tell me, why, why do they call it, uh, I, child, I got sugar. Why, why do they call it sugar? Because of the disease. All right, all right. So anybody who couldn't figure out what the word diabetes is, if you're dealing with sugar, come on, say amen. <laughs> Uh, then that program is going to be for you. Our edu educational fund here at Hillcrest Church is doing a tremendous job. Come on, say amen. Amen. And uh, we have students and families that are benefiting from that uh, subsidy from our church. And uh, we have a thank you card from the Heralds uh, who uh, said to us, thank you so much for the support that you have given to our, our students uh, to have Christian education. So we wanted to share that with the church family today. Thank you so much for giving to that fund. Today is Baptismal Day. Come on, say amen. Amen. Amen, amen. We have, we have um, uh, Renee Turner, who um, is going down into the watery grave of baptism. Amen. And we're, we're very happy about that. Uh, we're going to take a moment to, uh, to examine her. And preparatory to that, uh, I'm going to ask that Elder Boone will come down very quickly. Uh, we, we thank God for what we've done so far uh, in taking care of that house uh, that is our house across the street. Come on, say amen. amen. Um, we, are, we are planking it down. We're almost um, at the halfway mark of paying off that house, and we praise God for it. It's a, it's a nice, comfortable house. Amen. amen. I, I thought our students that are staying in it would say amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Um, and we, we prayed, and we asked the Lord to, um, to help us and uh, to pay off this house. Some people are asking the Lord to give them um, some, some overtime and some blessings. And uh, Elder Boone, just share with us, after we prayed at that business meeting, uh, what, what has God done relative to that? Yes. Uh, when they were taking uh, requests from us with regards to what we were willing to give, I asked the pastor, I said, pray that I get some overtime. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, we're going to pray right now. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate a pastor, anyone who would pray for you right now. Mm -hmm. And the following Sabbath, he called me into his office. He said, I just want to let you know that I'm praying for you about what you requested from the Lord. I said, okay, brother pastor, I appreciate it. And when the Lord answers the prayer, I'll let you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm standing here today to give the testimony that the Lord has answered <laughs> the prayers of his people. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not only did the Lord give me overtime. Yes. He gave me two days of overtime. My Lord. And he gave me what I would call a triple blessing because mm -hmm. I got the overtime, I got an extra day, and I did not have to work hard for the money. My Lord. <laughs> hey. And he did hey. one more thing that's very important to one me. One more thing. 
I work 12 hour night shifts from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. I did not weary. My Lord. Amen. Didn't get tired. I didn't get tired. Yeah. Praise God. Praise from God. From all blessings flow. That's, that's, that sounds like some of that pressed down, shaking together and running over blessings. Any, <laughs> anybody else want some pressed down stuff? Come on, come on. Don't be ashamed, Lord. I need some pressed down stuff. Come on, say amen. And the, he's the kind of God that will bless us, and we don't even get tired getting the blessing. Come on, say amen. Amen, amen, amen. Very quickly, I'm going to ask that Renee would stand, um, and we're going to have uh, this examination with Renee, and then we're going to welcome our visitors that are here with us uh, at the Hillcrest Church. I'm going to ask church family that as we go over these vows um, this morning that you um, renew your vows with the Lord as well. Is that all right? And uh, because Renee is uh, one of our brand new family members, uh, it would be a tremendous blessing for her to see her church family standing with her as she goes through these vows. And so for those who can at all possible stand and Renee, as we read these vows, simply respond by saying, I do. And church family, if you would, as you renew your vows with Christ as well, uh, answer in the affirmative. Renee, do you believe in God the Father, in his son Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Spirit? Do you accept the death of Jesus Christ on Calvary as the atoning sacrifice for the sin of men and believe that through faith in his shed blood, men are saved from sin and its penalty? renouncing the world and its sinful ways, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? And do you believe that God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven your sins and given you a new heart? Do you accept by faith, uh, do you accept by faith the righteousness of Christ, recognizing him as your intercessor in the heavenly sanctuary? And do you claim his promise to strengthen you by his indwelling spirit so that you may receive power to do his will? Do you believe that the Bible is God's inspired word and that it constitutes the only rule of faith and practice for the Christian? Do you accept the Ten Commandments as still binding upon Christians? And is it your purpose by the power of the indwelling Christ to keep this law, including the Fourth Commandment, which requires the observance of the seventh day of the week as the Sabbath of the Lord? Amen. Is the soon coming of Jesus the blessed hope in your heart? And are you determined to be personally ready to meet the Lord and to do all in your power to witness to his loving salvation and by life and word to help others to be ready for his glorious appearing? Amen. Do you accept the biblical teaching of spiritual gifts? And do you believe that the gift of prophecy in the remnant church is one of the identifying marks of the church? And do you believe in God's remnant church? And is it your purpose to support the church by your tithe and offering, your personal effort and influence? Do you believe that the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and that you are to honor God by caring for your body, avoiding the use of that which is harmful, abstaining from all unclean foods, from the use, manufacture, or sale of alcoholic beverages, the use, manufacture, or sale of tobacco, any of its forms, for human consumption, and from the misuse of or trafficking in narcotics or other drugs? Knowing and understanding the fundamental Bible principles as taught by the Seventh-day Adventist Church, is it your purpose, Renee, by the grace of God to order your life in harmony with these principles? And do you accept the New Testament teaching of baptism by immersion? And do you desire to be so baptized as a public expression of your faith in Christ and in the forgiveness of your sins? And lastly, do you believe that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the remnant church of Bible prophecy and that the people of every nation, race, and language are invited and accepted into its fellowship? Do you so desire membership? Amen. Church family, you have heard. Uh, amen. You have heard um, Renee accept all of these vows. And it is appropriate at this time to accept a motion for her to be part of this church, this church family right here, which is a part of the worldwide church uh, of Seventh-day Adventists. But more importantly, she is a part of the kingdom of God. Is there such a motion like that today? It's been moved. Is there a second? Are you ready for the question? 
All those in, in favor signify by saying hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. We praise God for that. And uh, forgive us, we just had a whole lot of house cleaning business uh, this morning, but we're going to move on in our worship experience. Who is hanging out with us at the Hill today for the very first time? It's your first time uh, with us today. Anybody like that today? Oh, right here. Let's come on, stand to your feet. Amen. These are our students from uh, the LE work. And uh, I'm going to ask that their, their director will come very quickly. Pastor Madison, will you come? Very quickly, this is our publishing director. We have rented out our home to uh, Pastor Madison, and uh, he's a good tenant already. Come on, say amen. And he, he, he paid his bill up front. Come on, say amen out there. We, we like those kind of people. I thought y'all would clap a little bit more for that. Amen. Hallelujah. Come very quickly. These are our visitors. They are visiting with us, and we're happy to have them. Can you share with us who these students are? Thank you so much, Pastor. Good morning. Happy Sabbath, everyone. I'm just so excited to have these young people. They come from so many different places, uh, primarily Oakwood University. Uh, they will be committing uh, 10 weeks. They've already done one week to share in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why don't you put your hands together for the Lord one time? Amen, amen. And so we're just thankful for them and their service. Keep us in your prayers as they are out in the community, um, and we'll be so thankful uh, for that. Thank you again, Pastor. All right. Go ahead and stand to your feet as we welcome one another. Please come by and hug on these students and let them know how much you're appreciative to having them in our church and in our community doing God's work. Let's welcome one another. Tell, tell your neighbor, welcome to the hill. Welcome to the hill. God bless you. Lord, there is grace. 
trust that you feel welcome today. You notice all of us are walking around with our t-shirts on. It's not because we wanted to be disrespectful to the house of God. Come on, say amen. Everything we do around here at The Hill has a purpose, and we believe that Jesus is the center of everything we do. Come on, say amen. And so this morning, we're wearing our t-shirts uh, in honor of Christ being the center of everything we do at Hillcrest, but we also want to knock on a few doors in our community immediately after worship and just remind them that Christ is also the center of everything that they do, the center of our faith our family, our finance, our fellowship, and our forgiveness. And so we thank God for that. Elder Sam Wise, along with the pastoral staff, will be going out with those of you who are prepared to help us today. Just for a few moments, we believe we can get this done in about 15 to 20 minutes or less. Knock it on the door, hand them a little happiness digest, and let them know that Christ is the center of everything that they do. If you support us today, we'll be happy to have you. Immediately after our worship experience, we're going to meet down front and get our instructions from Elder Wise and the pastoral team. God bless you as we go higher in our worship experience today. Good morning again, Hillcrest. It's praise and worship time. Did anybody get a victory this week? I got a victory over the 2012-2013 school year. It's over. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whatever your victory is, I want you to stand with us. If you feel comfortable, sing with us. My name is Victory.
just talks about praising the name of Jesus. He's our rock. He's our fortress. He's our deliverer. We just want to praise the name of Jesus.
morning is prayer time. And it's our custom here at Hillcrest to invite those who wish to come down front. In many of the pews, there's a little prayer request card. They're not? Because you've used them all. That's a good thing. We need to get some more. Uh, if you need one, raise your hand and we'll see if we can put something in your hands that you can write a prayer request on it. Because we've got some boxes down front. And what we ask people to do is to put their prayer requests or praise reports in those boxes. And somebody prays those. I have a hand over here. Please do it like a two hands on the right hand side. Yes. Kathy Boone is requesting one. And still hands going up. <laughs> in John chapter 17. The Bible says, these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. This is life eternal, knowing God. And as beautiful as the church is, and as wonderful as the choir sings, and as great as the musicians are, that's not life eternal. It enhances our worship experience, but it's not life eternal. Life eternal is knowing God. And it requires that you communicate with God to know him. So at this point in time, we'd like all those who are remaining in their seats, if they feel so comfortable and so led, that you would kneel. And the rest of us, we ask that you would bow your heads, we'll all bow our heads, as we communicate with our Father in heaven. Heavenly Father, thank you for being God. God who is the creator, God who is the sustainer, God who is the redeemer, God who has made himself known to sinful human beings because if you didn't make yourself known, there's no way we could figure you out or find you out. So Lord, based on your omnipotent love, your infinite divinity, we worship you. This morning in this place, we open our hearts, we open our minds, we pray that your spirit would come and be within each one of us. Teach us to receive the truth as it is in Jesus. Help us to know you in the pardoning of our sins and in the living of our lives. Father, we thank you for the Hillcrest Church, the congregation, the people. We thank you for the t-shirts that we wear because they are an expression of Jesus as the center of all that we are. Father, we ask that as we go out this afternoon, that you wouldn't let the sun get too hot. Keep us cool so we don't overheat. But Lord, there are people who will be reached this afternoon. And right now they may be eating, they may be watching television, they may be sitting on the porch. They do not know that they are about to have an encounter with people that serve Jesus. So now, Lord, begin to agitate their lives. Make them remember those things that they wondered about at times past. Help them to think about eternal truths so that when someone from Hillcrest knocks on their door, they'll have the question already formed on their lips. Father, we thank you so much for the leadership of our church, the double duty leadership. We have two pastors. I don't know a lot of churches that have two pastors. Some have a pastor and some have an associate. I consider us having two pastors. So Father, we thank you so much for for considering Hillcrest enough to give us our pastors. And we ask, Father, that you would bless them. We know you've blessed them in the past, but we want that blessing to continue and to multiply. We want it to spread across their families and their neighbors and all those they just bump into on the street. Lord, we pray that in a special way, Hillcrest will fulfill the mission that you have ordained for us to have. It's for your glory. 
It's in your name we ask it. Remember the sick members of our congregation, they're listed in our bulletin. I won't read them, but I pray that each member would take time out to read and pray for the sick and the shut-in. Lord, help us as we move through this life to remember that Jesus is coming again and that your purpose is for us to be saved when he comes, but actually before he gets here. So help us, Father, to follow where you lead. We ask that you would be with our speaker today, Pastor Hewlett, that you would pour into him the spirit of truth and open our hearts to receive as he shares. And as we leave this place, Father, help us to step in faith every step, every day, all along our way. And may your name be wonderfully glorified as a result. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. church family. <laughs> man, this is what I love about church. Come on, say amen out there. When the Holy Spirit does his thing. Y'all missed that. I said when the Holy Spirit does his thing. Not anybody's sermon, not anybody's song, but the Holy Ghost. Come on, say amen. amen. And uh, Renee Turner is such a candidate where the Holy Spirit has spoken to our heart. And Pastor Hewlett and I had the uh, awesome privilege to sit in the pastor study and, and just hobnob with her. And, you know, one of the things she said, you know, I, I've been returning tithe and offering here for a whole year. And she said, she said, I, I thought I was already a member. Come on, say amen. <laughs> And, and Felita, I started to say, girl, you're doing more than the folk that are members, my Lord. But, but I held back. Amen. And um, we, um, we, we had the opportunity just to uh, dialogue with her about the word of God and some questions um, that she had. And it's, that's our job as, as people of God. Everybody ought to know the word of God. Come on, say amen. So that when people have questions, they can have them answered from the word of God. And so we're happy to have Renee be a part of our church family. Um, her mom and her daughter are here standing on the stage. Amen. Amen. Miss Alexis and mom. Miss May Andrews is here with us, her mother. Wait, wave your hand, mom. They see how pretty you look. Amen. And um, so today, we're going to ask that um, Renee's extended family, beyond her mom and her, uh, her daughter, if you would just please stand letting Renee know, we're going to hang out with you, girl. You're not by yourself. We're going to invite you over to Sabbath dinner. Come on, say amen. amen. We're going to see to it that you become a part of the fabric of the Hillcrest Church.
head is bowed, every eye is closed. And in this room, in the quietness of this room, there's, there's somebody else. Holy Spirit has spoken to you very clearly over these past few weeks, past few months. You've been putting it off, asking God for time, and God has extended that time for you. This pool is open today so that you can say yes to Jesus Christ. Where every head is bowed, every eye is closed, and you know Christ has already spoken to you long before this baptismal day. And you're saying, Pastor, I need to be a part of that baptism, the very next one. And then there are others who are saying, Pastor, I need to be in there today. That's your desire. We will accommodate you because it's just that important. That's you today. I want you to just lift your hand where you are, wherever you are in this room right now. I need to be a part of the next baptism. I need to be a part of this baptism today. God, thank you. Although the struggle is ongoing, thank you that they are here today. May they lay down one more battle so they can pick you up totally and be free. Continue to bless our worship experience this day. We do pray in Jesus' name.
church say amen. Praise now. It could be worse. Come on, say amen. Oh, wow. On on next Sabbath, when did I say everybody? On next Sabbath, the Hillcrest Higher Purpose Young Adult Choir will be the featured choir for camp meeting. Come on, say amen. They'll be singing at the Oakwood University Church on Sabbath morning. And uh, man, we're very happy about that. Come on, let's put our hands together for them one more time. Amen. Uh, we... We need your prayers, and all those who used to sing with us or um, you have a desire to help us go to the next level, we want to rightly represent the hill at Oakwood. Is that all right? Uh, so on next Wednesday night, um, the Higher Purpose Choir will be rehearsing, and then on Friday night. But we need all of you um, to help us make this a grand experience. And so uh, Lena, is Lena? Lorna. One of the L's. Uh, she's going to meet with us immediately after the worship experience, those who are going to help us make this happen on next Sabbath. Thank you guys so much. And let's pray for our young adult choir as they represent us on next Sabbath. It's time for our children's story at this time. It's time for the children's star. Y'all come on down. Turn me up. And take me to the top, if you would, please. Oh, you ought to have been there when Jesus saved my soul. Don't act brand new. Clap your hands. You ought to have been there when Jesus made me whole. Sing it. You ought to have been there when Jesus washed me clean. Come on, children. We'll wait for you. You ought to have been there when the Holy Ghost fell on me. Hey! was a Friday evening when I met the Lord. <laughs> he healed my body. Come on, Anaya. And he made me whole. He brought me out of the Maya and clay and placed my feet, size 13, on a ride to stay. You would have been there when Jesus saved my soul. I told you I feel good. You would have been there when Jesus made me whole. Put your hands together. When Jesus washed me clean, hey, you would have been there. Whee! I'm done. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Man, they all got me cranked up back there. I heard that God is good. <laughs> I've been walking with the law for some 30 some years, <laughs> and I've never seen the righteous forsaken, <laughs> nor the seed begging bread. <laughs> I'm going to leave it alone. I told you I feel good this morning. Well, Whee! It's children's time. This thing is in my way. I know there's a light into my feet and a lamp, but can we place it to the side? All right. Been a minute since Uncle Sirius has been here, but y'all know when Uncle Sirius is in town, it's okay to make some noise. So we're going to try this one time and see if we get it right. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. Woo! How y'all doing in the adult world? Just like I thought. All right. 
I see a few new faces here. If you haven't seen me before, my name is Uncle Cyrus. That's S-E-R-I-O-U-S. Cyrus Fleetwood Alfred. My mama named me Cyrus for one reason only, and that's because <laughs> I ain't no joke. That's right. I don't tell children stars. I tell object lessons because I know you're smart enough to get it. Today is no different, all right? Today is going to be a short object lesson, but I know that you can get it. And it's very, very important to listen today because it has everything to do with what you're going to do after church. Some of y'all have these T-shirts on. Going to go out in the community and tell people about Jesus. About who? If you knew him, you'd say louder than that. Tell somebody about who? Jesus. That's right. Well, this morning's object lesson is called So Fresh, So Clean. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna try to hold, I'm gonna try to hold my mule. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. But if I don't, go with me. Say it again. So fresh. So, so clean. So All right. Uncle Cyrus has in his hand a couple of personal products here. And just as a public service announcement, Uncle Cyrus is endorsed by Dove's Men Care for that silky smooth feeling and the ever fresh, uh, freshness that can come only from being clean. Select Dove's Men Care for your men's product needs. Did y'all get that on tape? Very good. All right. In my left hand, I have some what is called deodorant. Okay deodorant. And in my right hand, I have some soap. Okay? Some soap. All right? Now, when you take a bath or a shower or some sort of wash up, it is recommended that in order to get clean, somebody say clean, that you use some soap. Now, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time here on this because if you don't know that you should be using soap, Talk to somebody afterwards. Trust me, you need to use some soap in order to get clean. clean. Now, some of you are, well, most of you, well, some of you, are too young to be using deodorant right at this moment. But deodorant helps keep you fresh. Somebody say fresh. So you put deodorant on after you have washed up so that you can keep down the perspiration and therefore keep down the odor, thus deodorant. Okay? So once you're clean, you need to be fresh, right? The two together are what is recommended for you to be fresh and clean. Come on, stay with me. Why is it important to be fresh and clean? Well, if you were to wash up with soap and water, but not put any deodorant on. Maybe not now, but when you're a little bit older. That counteracts everything that you did in the tub. Because at some point in time during the day, you will no longer be fresh. This is sensitive, so we're going to be careful. But if you were not to take a bath, vice versa, and only put on deodorant, college students, You wouldn't be clean, and you would only be fresh for just a minute, if that. So in order to make your cleanliness last, <laughs> you should be fresh as well. And in order to make your freshness last, you need to be It's simple. So just like all my other object lessons, the question is, what does this have to do with us today? It's spiritual. You see, being fresh and clean is just like being a Christian. You see, freshness is like that hospitality, the smile. Everybody give me a smile. Right? Cleanliness is the love in your heart that only Jesus can give. The two working together make you the best Christian that you can be. Let me illustrate. If you are clean on the inside and have the love of Jesus, but you don't smile at anybody. I told you I'm going to try and stay with this. If you have the love of Christ in your heart, but you don't ever smile at anybody, nobody will know that you're clean on the inside. Vice versa, if you're always smiling at somebody, 
but you ain't clean on the inside. You're not a real Christian. So it behooves you to smile at people and still have the love of Christ inside of you because the two of those things together will allow people to know that you're a Christian. So today when you go out and you witness for Jesus, smile on the outside and be clean and loving on the inside. Stay right there. The adults didn't get it, so I'm going to help them. <laughs> you see, being fresh <laughs> is inviting somebody to church. <laughs> being clean <laughs> is sitting next to them when they get here. <laughs> being fresh <laughs> is giving your testimony. Being clean is actually paying your tithe. <laughs> being fresh <laughs> is shaking the pastor's head. <laughs> being clean <laughs> is not talking about him over Sabbath dinner. <laughs> Being fresh is saying that you've got a wife. Being clean is opening the door for her. Being fresh is lifting Jesus high. But being clean is walking straight when you're low. I feel like preaching. Being fresh is coming to Hillcrest. Being clean is getting here for Sabbath school. When you put the two together, you can be fresh and clean. The psalmist says, create, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Somebody say fresh and clean, fresh and clean. When we go out today, I want everybody to be fresh and clean. Tell somebody about Jesus. He said, if I be lifted above the earth, I will draw all men unto me. And if the man is nasty, make sure that you're fresh and you're clean. Somebody give God some praise. How many of y'all want to be fresh and clean? Let me see your best smile. Be sure to give that smile to everybody you see today that you witnessed to Jesus for. And then on the inside, I want you to pray and help you, ask Jesus to help you to love and accept them. It don't do no good to be fresh without being clean. Who wants to pray? Come on, come on, come on, Kyla. Oh, this is a brother and sister duo. We want this. Come on. Kyla and Journey, come on. You guys can come up too. Come on, come on. Come on. All right, we're going to have brother then sister. All right. No, oh, sister then brother. She teaches us how me to be good, how me to be good with my mom and daddy, and, and how me to be good, I cool, and teach us me, amen. Amen. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Help me have a loving church. Help, help me go to heaven safely in Jesus' name. Amen. And dear Jesus, help us to smile and show the love of Christ and to actually be loving on the inside so that we can be called fresh and clean. And when you come back, you can say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. In Jesus' name, amen. Boys and girls, it's time to take up our offering. Everybody make sure you get a bucket. Say thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Make sure that you give liberally to our children's Christian education fund. We like the stuff that jangles, but we love the stuff that's silent. Be sure to give liberally. We want to keep it going, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. It's a hallelujah time when you give back to the Lord. So don't just look there, just don't sit there and look, pat your hands so you can get ready to give to the Lord. This is the time when you need to be saying, oh Lord, what else can I do? Because he's been so good to you. I can sit up here all day, everybody's been giving testimonies. Let me tell you about mine. I played for F.H. Jenkins kindergarten program. Every year I keep telling Jill, no, no, no. This year, I'm gonna tell you, Sister Kim gave it to my granddaughter. And so I got home, it was $100. I said, Lord, thank you. 
because that was part of my pledge. So now I can give 300, huh? We, we had pledged 200, so now I got an extra 100, so that's 300. Try him and see, I didn't even pray, but he knew already. So if you pray, what in the world are you gonna get? You need to be happy about it. This is tithe and offering, giving back what you really don't have, but he's giving it to you. Clap your hands, y'all. Oh, you're sad, you're sad, you're sad. You're sad he made a way out of no way. Press down, when the pastor said press down, shaking together, running over. You ought to be shouting by now, you ought to be You ought to be up and say, Lord, thank you for what you already have done and what you're going to do this week. You got to get excited about Jesus. He's an exciting God. If you don't do nothing but stand up, give him the honor and the glory this morning. Praise him, Lord. Praise him, Lord. Praise him, Lord. Oh, yeah. I like music. I like, I don't like dead people. You don't have to stand up for Jesus. Get your tithe and offering out. Put it in there. Put your sacrificial offering in there and say, Lord, what you going to do this week? What you going to bless me with? If he doesn't do anything he made you go in spite of, I still have a leg that he's operating on. But I can still hop around. I can still move. He's a good God. And I'm going out today on the bad leg. <laughs> Y'all don't get excited. I'll get excited by myself because he's good. So every Sabbath, you ought to give him the praise and the honor and the glory because this only comes one time a week. So you may not see it next Sabbath. Why don't you just stand and give him praise? I can't let it go, Pastor. I can't let it go. Deacons from four. Awesome, wonderful, marvelous. Oh yeah. Yes, see, I can't. Okay. Let it alone. Let it alone. Let it alone. Because he's a sinner. I'm a faith. My family. My finance. My fellowship and my forgiveness. He's the center of it all. Our Father and our God, we are so grateful. We are not worthy of your many blessings, but you are so good to us, Lord, in spite of ourselves. Help those who have not tried you, Lord, to be trying and tested and proved that you are the God who says he will be there in spite of everything. And Lord, those who are Shake, they are pressed down with bills. They're pressed down with health issues. Remove it right now in the name of Jesus. We know that you are God of God's Lord of Lords. Bless this offering, Lord. Let it overflow with abundance in Jesus' name. Blessed be God. Amen. Take care. 
actually very easy to praise the Lord when Jesus is at the center. Believe it or not, it's easy to form the words, Jesus, I love you, when you know that he is the center of everything that we do. I don't know about you, but I do know that Jesus is the center of my life. And it's because he's the center of my life that I can express with joy that, Lord, I do love you. And I'm not ashamed to let him know that I do love him. No matter where I'm at, no matter what I'm doing, I'm letting him know, Lord, I love you. I love you. When Jesus is the center of your life, it is easy to give him praise and to worship him. We're thankful so much for a higher calling. Bless you uh, so much. You blessed us. And I, I just want to say right now, I think it's a wonderful thing. As a matter of fact, Pastor Griffin, I don't think I know it's a wonderful thing that the Hillcrest Seventh-day Adventist Church Youth or Young Adult Choir will be singing at camp meeting. Come on, somebody. I, I know we have, I, I know we have these beautiful t-shirts and we're representing, but we are going to have the opportunity to minister to hundreds yeah, even thousands at camp meeting. Uh, come on now. Come on now. And when they hear that melodious sound, Sean, they're going to ask the question, Who, who's that up there? And we're going to let them know that we're lifting up the name of Jesus Christ. But where are we from? Hillcrest, Seventh-day Adventist Church, Nashville, Tennessee. Praise be to God. I know this morning uh, has been has been long, and I am so thankful, and I think it's a wonderful day for us to just praise the Lord for our baptism today. I mean, if heaven is rejoicing, we ought to also. We ought to be rejoicing, and it is wonderful to see, uh, uh, Elder Majors, just to see uh, 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 just that baptism here in this place, that we are able to see uh, someone going down into the watery grave, coming back up into new life. It is a blessing is what it is. But let's get into the Word of God this morning. Let us pray. Father, we are so thankful for our time this morning. Lord, now we just ask for your presence to dwell with us continually while we're here. And Lord, we ask that you would be the center of our lives right now. Lord, be with us. Lead us, Lord. 
prick our hearts today. We thank you and love you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. If you would, turn into the Word of God this morning to the book of Luke. What book did I say? Book of Luke. You can talk back. I uh, got permission from Pastor Griffin. He said that y'all can uh, talk back. The book of Luke. The book of Luke, chapter 15. The book of Luke, chapter 15. What book did I say? Chapter what? And join me at verse 11, the book of Luke, chapter 15, and join me at verse 11, the book of Luke, chapter 15, and join me, if you would, please, at verse 11. I'll read in your hearing, if that's okay with you this morning. The book of Luke, chapter 15, and verse, uh, verse 11, the Bible says, and he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me, somebody say that with me, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with what kind of living? And when he had spent how much? There arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he said, and he sent him into his fields to feed his swine. And he would feign having filled his belly with the husk, and the swine did eat, no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? Verse 18 says, And I will arise and Go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And the Bible says he arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion, and he ran and he fell on his neck and he kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And while you're at it, the Bible says, bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For this, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they begin to be merry. I want to talk with you this morning, if you allow, about the come to Jesus moment. The come to Jesus moment. Let us pray. Father, we are humbled and we are thankful, Lord. Now, Lord, rest, rule, and abide in this place. Lord, let us put aside things that are outside of this place right now in Jesus' name. For, Lord, we can do nothing about those things, but let our eyes, our heart, and our mind be firmly stayed on thee. Move in a mighty way and in a special way. Lord, it's not about the man but it is indeed about you, Lord Jesus. You being lifted up. Touch us today, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. The Bible tells us in this particular story or parable that Jesus has just finished telling some parables to those he was preaching to. Jesus finds himself in the midst of those who have come to test him once again. 
Jesus is preaching again to those who he loves and who he's trying to call into an intimate relationship. Those people are the lost. I'm so thankful right now, this day, that Jesus does not give up on those who are lost. I'm so thankful that Jesus has not turned his back and said there's no hope for them, but there is hope in Jesus Christ if they would turn from their ways. Jesus is preaching to them and he's going on about the lost coin and he speaks about the lost sheep. And as he's speaking to them, uh, he notices that the mood changes in the crowd. So he decides, since I'm being tested, I need to tell yet another story. He begins to tell the story about this man and his two sons. And, and, and we've just read and we understand that the man and the two sons, we, we go right for the, the, the point of it. The point is, is that the father is God. We know that the two sons are the children that are within the family of God. Let me set them up. As the family of God, the two children are in the family of God. Grace and mercy prevails. The two children, the two sons are in here, and, and, and we find that the father is now in a predicament. We find that the father finds himself in conversation with one of the sons. The younger son comes to the father, and he tells him that he wants his share of the inheritance. The younger son lets him know right then and there that there is something that you have that I want. The Bible lets us know that he comes to him, and if we understand Jewish custom, we know that, that the requested inheritance that the young son wanted was not in favor of him to ask, but the custom was that a third goes to each son. The inheritance cannot be gained until the father is dead. So with the young man requesting this from his son or from the father, he's specifically telling his father, I'm speaking to you as if you are dead. Deuteronomy 21 and 17 lets us know that there is a way that you are supposed to receive the inheritance. I can think and see now as the father is talking with his son and he's listening to him. The son not only said that he requested the inheritance, but he demanded of his father that he wanted his inheritance. I can see that the father is trying to work it out in his head that literally if I give this to you, I'm saying that I'm dead and I'm no more of any effect on you, but you're taking this inheritance for your own. The father knew that he was not ready. Oftentimes when we listen to the story, we understand something that's very clear, Elder Majors. That's very clear that there are some things, remember this point, there are some things that are inherently yours, but you're just not ready for. I can see now the father speaking with the son, and I, I can see the son requesting that I want my inheritance. As a matter of fact, he gets to the point where he demands that I want this inheritance. Uh, uh, Pastor Griffin, I think oftentimes uh, uh, of my own son, Joshua. And, and I think that as I'm trying to figure this out and see the scene that is being played out, I, I don't know how I would react, but I know that I, would, I wouldn't want him to have the inheritance right away. Why? Because I knew that he would not be ready for the inheritance. Or oh, you're trying to figure out sometimes in your life why you don't have certain things. God withholds them from you because he understands that you're not ready for them. Understand something, the inheritance that the father had already belonged to the son. The inheritance that the father had, he knew that upon his death he was going to give it to the son. But when the son came to him, he just looked at him and he didn't know what to do. And I can only envision that I would let my son know, don't do it because you're just not ready for it. The Bible lets us know in Jeremiah 29 and 11, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a bright future. Oftentimes, we demand things of God because we think we're ready for them. You, you want to know why that relationship is not working out right now. God says, I know that you're going to have a firm relationship, but I don't want to give it to you right now because you're just 
not ready for. You want to know why my finances are not working out from month to month? God says, I'm going to bless you, but you're not ready for the greater things that I want to give you. You want to know why your ministry is not working out? Uh, God says, I want to give you the ministry, and it's yours. You don't have to fight for it. You don't have to beg for it. You don't have to pay for it, but you've got to trust me. You wonder why your career is not going in a certain direction. Why? Because you're demanding much too much before it's time that you're ready. The Bible says that the son came to him, and when the son came to him, he told him, I want my inheritance right away. The second reason I, I really feel like the father is in a struggle and a conflict with his son is that he's trying to teach his son that you need to know the difference between the source and a resource. I, I looked it up and I tried to find out what it was, Barrington. A, a, a source is a continued origin. It starts somewhere and it continues on. It does not run out. But, but a resource is a supply where you just benefit for the moment. Can I work with this one a little bit? The Bible says that the, 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 the father, uh, the son came to the father and told him, I want what's mine right now. But the father is in conflict because he wants him to understand that you need to understand the difference between a source and a resource. You see, if you're connected, you have a source that will not run out. You see, when you're married and, and, and you have that relationship with your wife, you can say, this is not a resource, something temporarily, but my source is in my father. Our marriage source is in my father. My finances find their source within my father. All things that I do find my source in my father. Have you ever been to the point where you said, I want something right now, and if you will give it to me, I know what to do with it. I've made plans with it. But God understands that you would only use it as a resource, a benefit just for that time, and it would not last. Oh, how do I know this? How do I know this? Oh, I, I, I remember receiving some money one time. I, I, I don't want anybody to say that they, they've not done this before, but I, I got that money and I thought that I would just put it away in savings, Elaine. And, and I just put it all in savings. But I did not honor the source in which it came. For some reason, when you put money into a savings account, it should last. For some reason, when you put it up and there's no access to it, it should stay there for a while. But I noticed that from month to month, my check, my check got smaller and smaller. The days grew longer and my check grew shorter. And I had to go into the savings. So that now the money that I had received only became a resource and it was not the source. The father says, I've got to get my son to understand that this is not just a resource, but son, if you'll just wait, if you'll just trust me, whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish, I've already got it for you, but you've got to trust me. The Bible says that there he is telling him about the source and the resource in conflict, trying to figure it out. The Bible tells us that the father knew that he was not ready. And as we go on, the father suddenly tells him, you can have it. The father must have gone in dialogue with him back and forth. And he tells the son, it's all yours. You can take the third that is yours. And the Bible says that the father gave the third to his son, the inheritance that was his. And there's something important that you have to understand. When you make demands of God, God will give you exactly what you want. There are times when God says, I've struggled with you enough. I want this to understand, somebody in here to understand right now, that there are times when you make demands of God, and God will give you exactly what you want in your life. When you get it, you may not be ready for it, and you may suffer the consequences and the penalty for it. But God says enough, and he lets his hands off on this son. He tells him, son, you can have it. Go ahead and do what you want to do. God gave him exactly what he wanted. We have to understand something that in order for us to understand what God is trying to do for us, we've got to, we've got to know 
how we are connected to this source. I, I told you one time before, I'm an illustrative pastor, Pastor Griffin. I'm an illustrative pastor. So I want, could you come up here for me, man? Now, I don't even know the young lady. What's your name? Katina. Thank you, Katina, for helping me out. Could you help me with this, Melvin? Could you hold this for me? I want to share with you about the source and the resource. You see, Katina's holding this lamp. And as long as she has this lamp, she's connected this lamp with the source. So at any time, Katina, we can turn her light on. The father understood that, my son, you're connected, but when you make demands of me and you tell me that you want to leave with me, what you do essentially, because I know that you're not ready, is you disconnect yourself from the source. So now all that you want, I'll give to you, but now your lamp does nothing else. It only becomes a resource. It has an end, and it does not, and it does not have a beginning. There's no end to it. it I'm sorry, it ends, and that's it. So when you are disconnected from that source, but the father wanted his son to understand that if you stay connected to me, the source, you can go much further. Right now, Katina can't go anywhere because she's not connected to the source. But when Katina is connected to the source, then Katina can cut a light on. Now, Katina, if you would, go ahead and walk. Now, some would say, okay, that's good, Katina, you're far. <laughs> you can stay up there, Katina. My point is, is that Katina's connected to the source. She's connected to the source. And because she's connected to the source, she can be trusted to go outside the bounds of where she's already at. She's connected to the source because now she's not in full rebellion. There are some things that God says, I'll give you. You don't mind standing there for a second, do you, Katina? Y'all give it up for Katina real quick. There are some things that God says, I want to give to you, but you can't be trusted outside the boundaries of where you're already at. So now if you stay connected to the source, then what I can do is I can allow you to go and move a little bit further. Now, somebody had told me when I tried this illustration before, Sam, someone had told me, said, well, pastor, that means as long as I stay connected to God, I can go anywhere I want to. I can go to the club. I can go gambling. I can do whatever I want to. How does that work? If you're connected to the source then what simply happens is if you decide that you want to go inside the club or you want to go gambling, uh, Katina, step over in the club. Then basically God just cuts off the source. See, he says you can, you, you, you can go a little bit further, and that's for those who have said to themselves, God, if you will trust me just a little bit with it, if you'll give me just a little bit of it, I promise I'll do right with it. And then when you get out there, you get tempted to go somewhere else. Yes, he trusts you to a point. But then when you got to that point where you were going wrong, God says, wait a second. And he disconnects the source. The father wanted him to understand. Thank you, Katina. The father wanted to understand that no matter what happens, I want you to be connected to the source. Now, very much so. The Bible tells us and lets us know that the Father has said, enough is enough. I cannot waste any more time on this. You've argued with me enough. If you want the inheritance, you can have the inheritance. I'm letting you know right now that it's very difficult to understand this because this is for those who have started in a place or been in a place where others may not have been. Pastor Griffin, I remember last week that you said that we went to a little church and when we sat down at that little church, there was a woman who looked at Pastor Griffin and said, you must be a third generation Adventist. Pastor Griffin said, yes, but I'm thankful for his blocking power. Amazingly enough, uh, Pastor Griffin didn't finish that story. I want to tell you the rest. After she looked at him and said, you're a third generation at Venice, she looked at me and she said, you look like you've been through some things. I told her, yes, you're exactly right. I'm a third generation sinner. You see, although Pastor Griffin was thankful for his blocking power, I'm thankful for his pulling power. 
Because somebody in here understands that sometimes God didn't block what I wanted to do. And I found myself in some mess. I found myself deep in some stuff that I couldn't get myself out of. And I was thankful for his blocking power, but he didn't block me. He let me go. But what he did is he pulled me out. You see, when I got deep into my sin and I got deep into my mess, I'm trying to tell somebody, it's hard for us to understand. I understand I did not come into this church. I, I, I did not come into this church at a very early age. It was a late age. Yes, that's right. That's, that's right. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But, 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 but I had to understand what God was trying to teach me. And I'm thankful for his pulling power and how he pulled me out of some mess that I was in. You've got to understand that sometimes, even though we're in the family of God, we can be very demanding of God and we can tell God what we want, even though we know we're not ready for it. How do I know this? There's some folks that have been in this church before. They're no longer in this church. God says, I need you to stay connected to the source. The Bible says that this source, this source that he gives, the father said, you want it, you've got it. This is yours. You can take it. It says that when the son received it, he stayed a few days at the house. <laughs> the Bible says that he stayed a few days to get his plans together. There are things that he wanted to do. He wanted to go right out in rebellion. He wanted to take on his desires. He wanted to do what he wanted to do. Has anybody ever in this place ever been in a position where you wanted to do what you wanted to do? Have you ever been in a position where you've made demands on God and told him, I'm ready. I've already made my own plans. I'm ready to go. Oh, <laughs> sound like I'm the only one, Pastor Madison. <laughs> I, I, I'm so thankful of what I heard. I have three daughters and one son. And I'm so thankful that as I grow to understand our children and our young people, that one of the things I do and I was told is that being a father is a microcosm of what God goes through with us. You ever said, boy, I tell you, that's a hard-headed son I got. You ever said, that girl got a mouth on her. And you looking around at everybody else and saying, Lord, have mercy. Where did they get that? The preacher told me, pastor, he told me, he said, Wayne, understand that how and what you do with your children, how you deal with them, the things you struggle with, the things you go through with them, the, the, the pain and at night, the tears you cry, the anguish that you have, the anger that you have, the, 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 the disappointment you have, all those things are just a small bit of what God goes through with you. Makes me sensitive to the idea of when I talk to my daughters and talk to my son. The Bible says that the father knew that he was not ready. He lets him have his inheritance and he tells him to go his way. The, the son takes and he heads off into a far country. The Bible says that he heads to this far country with all that he has been given of his inheritance. And I will tell you now that the reason that the son went into the far country is because you can leave and do whatever you want to do because there's no accountability required. See, this, this elder major just has to be for those who have been hard hit in their lives. This has to be for those right now. This message is for those who have said, I know what I want to do, and I'm going to step out and do it. And when you did it, you made sure that you left. The Bible says that he didn't stick around with his money. He understood if I stuck around with my money, my father and maybe even my brother is going to tell me that's not the right things to do. Maybe if I was out there on 18th Street doing something I wasn't supposed to do, maybe somebody from the Hillcrest Seventh-day Adventist Church might see me and say, 
say, you know you ought not to live like that. Maybe somebody might have seen you in that place in downtown and you weren't supposed to be having that thing in your hand and drinking it. And, and they told you you ought not to go that direction. But, but you decided at all that I, I don't want any accountability. So the Bible says that he left and went off into a far country. He went somewhere else when nobody would tell him about himself. He went somewhere else when nobody would tell her about herself. And when he got there, the Bible says that he got involved in riotous living. You see, no matter what happens, he came from a good stock. He came from parents who taught him. He still had the source there. He just was not connected. The Bible says that when he got there, he got into riotous living, sleeping with prostitutes, gluttony, drinking, partying. And isn't that amazing that when I think of the days of old, I'm on somebody. See, Pastor Griffin, I struggle a little bit because when you start talking about the days of old, people look at you like, hmm, what did you do? No, 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 it, 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 no, it ain't that business, but I will tell you this. The lady who said you've been through some things, she was right. You've seen some things, she was right. But we've all seen our share of some things. We've all been to some places that were a far country. The Bible says that he went to this far country, and, and, and when he got there, he was involved in riotous living. But understand something, because I want to call those who have said, I just don't know about this thing. I don't know if I can stay in this church. I don't know if I can deal with people. I, I have desires to do my own thing, and it's a call to you to say, no, come back, because there's grace and mercy involved in coming back. But the Bible says he got involved in riotous living, Carlin riotous living he was doing stuff but you know what i come to find out that you know what we don't even look right doing riotous living listen i remember when i attended oakwood university somebody say amen. i i had some friends that were at the university at a and m and we started talking and and if you want to know somebody that's connected see it's hard to live in riotous living when you know god it's hard to leave and go someplace and see how you fit in. He, he told me, he said, you know what? Something about the Adventist young people that when they come to parties, they party the hardest. You know, everybody else just dancing. They doing like this. The other, they, they going like this. They go. Let me tell you one that really got to me. Judy, I actually saw a lady from the church that shall remain nameless, a senior, and she was in the parking lot cussing. She didn't even look right doing it. And truth be told, if any of you tried it, you would look at yourself and say, I don't even look right doing that. I don't look right saying that. I don't look right being in this place. I don't look right dancing here. I don't look right. I can only see that young man who had all that money and friends out there in the far country trying to fit in with everybody else and could not keep up with everybody else. Everybody was looking at him like, what in the world are you doing here? The Bible says that he was in the far country involved in his riotous living. He had partied so hard. He had drank so hard. He had took care of his friends so hard that now the Bible says he didn't have nothing left. And I don't need to tell you that when the money runs out, the friends run out. When the money is gone, the friends, when you got money and you having a great time, everybody is your friend. And anybody in here who sits in here and at least looks at the news sometime or another knows every kind of professional ball player that's out here. When they have money, they got plenty of friends. But when they run out, nobody is there. The Bible says that he had spent up all that he had. I'm talking to those that are lost that have said, I'm frustrated with everything else. 
I'm demanding of God what I want to do. The Bible says that he went to the far country. He went in this riotous living. He was done. He spent all that he had, so much so that he had to ask one of the farmers, do you have a job? I want you to think about that. Here his parents are at Hillcrest, well-fed, nice house, everything for you, and you decide, I want to do it my way. It says that he lost everything. He asked for a job. The job was tending pigs. Isn't it amazing that when you mess with the devil and you're on his grounds, he will make you a spectacle in front of everybody. Here it is, a Jewish man, young man, knowing that it's his principles, knowing that it's the law, that he can't touch anything unclean, tending pigs. The Bible says that he's tending these pigs and he's hungry, doesn't have anything to eat. It got to the point where his hunger was so great that he even desired what the pigs were eating. Everybody at one point or another has had a come to Jesus moment. Everybody at one time or another in their life has experienced a dark time in their lives and have said, this is my low point. This is my come to Jesus moment. But then there's hope, Pastor Madison. Because even as that young man sat there, hungry, desiring what pigs were eating, the Bible says he came to his come to Jesus moment. He decided right now is the time. I've hit rock bottom. I've done all that I said I was going to do, and it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Have you ever thought that something you wanted to do was so bad, so great, that when you did get involved, in, it wasn't what you thought it was going to be? I thought early on that going out and having a great time, it was going to be the thing that I wanted to do, but it just became a mundane cycle like everything else. The Bible says he came to his senses, and I can see him now. Can you see him? He's sitting down there, desiring what the pigs are eating, and he says to himself, I'm getting up. My father has servants that work for him who eat more than I eat. Can you see him trying to work out the speech in his head? Can you see him trying to tell his father, Dad, I'm sorry for everything that I did. I'm sorry for how I disrespected you. I'm sorry for how I demanded my inheritance up front. Can you see him trying to work it out? He gets up and he begins to walk back to the house. And on the way back, I can see him trying to figure out what am I going to say to everybody else in the community? What are the people in the church going to think if I come back? And it says that when he was afar off, the Bible says there he was, his father, waiting for him. The Bible lets us know that his father did not stop looking out for his son. The father never stopped giving up on the fact that his son may appear on the horizon or on the road. Isn't that the kind of God we serve no matter what I've done no matter how I've treated God no matter what I've said to him no matter what I've demanded of him and if we were all faithful and understood to ourselves we've done some stuff to God that we would never do to man And God says, I'm not turning my back on you. And it says the father was waiting for his son to come back. The son saw him and what a celebration it was. He begins to head to the father. But it says the Bible lets us know that the father did not wait. Jewish tradition said that men, fathers, were not supposed to run in their robes. But when he saw that his son was coming back, it says that he took off like a shot to run and grab his son. He got to his son, and I can see that conversation starting. Dad, I want to let you know. I went. His dad didn't even pay attention to him. To 
turned to the side and told the servants, bring me a robe and bring me sandals and put a ring on his finger. And not only that, go and kill the fatted calf. My son who was lost is now found. grabs his son and he lets him know no matter what has happened, no matter what has transpired I've been here for you I've been faithful to you and I look for you each and every day. Courtney are you here? You in here? There's somebody I'm in it now she's here There's someone who is also a third generation sinner in this place. It's kind of difficult, and I know it's kind of quiet. I've been there before. I've sat in the same pews, and I've asked myself, Lord, why do I come every Sabbath? Why am I here? I leave here and I go into the world. And when I used to go into the world, I would see all the things, the glamour, the glitz, everything else that was out there. And I said, you know what? I can do it myself. Oh, you bless me with this and you bless me with this. If you let me take those tools, I know what to do with them out there. So I demanded my inheritance before I was ready. And I realized that when I got outside there, I realized that I wasn't ready. The Bible says that he was in riotous living. But when he had come to his Jesus moment, he said, I got to get back home. I got to get back home. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. The son wanted to explain his situation. The father only required one thing out of him. And that one thing was to accept him as he was. He only required that his son just say, yes. Son, I love you. Yes, father, I know. His father only wanted to let him know, son, I've looked for you to come across that road. He only wanted to hear his son say, yes, father, I know. Son, I want you back in my life, and I accept you right now. I restore you to where you were before, no matter what your past was. And all he wanted to hear the son say is, yes, Father, I accept the gift. There's somebody here today. You may have already been in the family of God, or you may be a third generational sinner. You've decided on your own that I want to do it like I want to do it. I want to try out what I want to try out. And you've left the fold of God. You haven't stuck around. You went to a far country. But you realize that where I'm at right now, it's not all of what I thought it would be. And now you're trying to figure out how to make your way back. It's simple just say yes. Yes, I'm ready to come back. Will your heart and soul say yes? Yes. Will your spirit still say yes? There is more that I require of you. Will your heart and soul say yes? Will your heart and soul say yes? Yes. Will your spirit still say yes? This is a call this morning, this afternoon. If I told you what I really need, you said I've been in a far country far too long. Will your heart and soul? 
it's time to come back home. It's time to put away those things that I've been involved in. It's time to accept the hand of the Father. I've tried to organize my speech. I've tried to come up with an explanation. I've tried to figure out what am I going to tell people if I stand and if I come back. The Father said, I'm not listening to any speeches. I don't care what has been done. I accept you just as you are. This morning, is there one here who have said, I need to say yes. I need to come back into the fold of God. I need to come back to my Father. And I'm not worried about what others are thinking, but I've said to myself, I've had my come to Jesus moment. Is there one who says yes this morning? Just one. God is calling you right now. He doesn't care where you've been. He doesn't care what you've done. He's just saying you need to come. Is there one? A moment that says I've had enough. It's easy this morning when you make them the center. It's easy to praise them. It's easy to accept them. It's easy to love them. Is there one? If you feel like you don't have the strength to do so, just raise your hand. There's elders around. They'll come and grab your hand. They'll walk with you. They'll walk the road back with you. The Father's waiting. Is there one? We know that there may be someone right now, Lord, that's struggling. Who says this is not an easy thing. I'm really worried about what others might think. I'm really worried about what others might say. So, Lord, we need you to move in a mighty way this afternoon. Move on the heart of someone who says, I have the strength. I can get up from this moment. I can get up from here. I'm tired of where I'm at. I'm ready to move forward. I'm ready to come back home. I'm ready to accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I'm ready to recommit myself to Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. Is there one? Just raise your hand. My second appeal, Lord. is for the one who is already with the pigs. One who's already at that moment. But Lord, they need the strength. They need the strength to come to Jesus. If you'll stand with me so that we can pray for that person. Stand with me, if you will, to pray for that person. The one who says, I just don't have the strength, but I know where I'm at. And I need a little bit more help. I haven't exactly hit the bottom yet. But Lord, I need to come back to you. Let us pray. Father, we pray for the individual who is struggling to come back. Who has realized, Lord, that they've gone against you. That they've gone off into a far country, Lord. They've done things that they're not proud of. But now, Lord, they're looking for a way to get back, Lord. They're trying to organize their speech and their words. They're trying to come up with a way to explain where they've been and why they've been there, Lord. 
Lord, we know that you're not even worried about that. All you want to see is them headed back to you, Lord Jesus. So, Lord, we ask in Jesus' name that you would be with them in a very special way right now. We pray for them, Lord, that they would have the strength to endure, Lord Jesus, to make the stand. And, Lord, if they're in this place right now, Lord Jesus, we ask that you would move on their heart right now. To move outside the pew. To come and stand with us right now, Lord Jesus. And say, I need that prayer. Lord, we thank you for your moving. We thank you for your leading. And we thank you for guiding us, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we just ask that if you would, help them to say yes. Help me to say yes. We thank you and love you. In Jesus' name, who is the center of our lives, we pray amen and amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen, amen. We're going to ask if uh, someone can grab my great clerk, Miss Shalita Static, out of nowhere. Oh, we have it. Okay. All right. And I have a... Um, Sister Lo had some books for me, if she could get those to me. All right. Very quickly, I'm going to ask Renee Turner if she will come on down. Amen. Come on down. And we baptize good-looking people in our church, too, don't we? Come on, say amen. Amen, amen. Um, all right. We wanted to give today to Miss Renee Turner her baptismal certificate in harmony with our Lord's command. Renee Turner was baptized at the absolute best church in the city of Nashville. Well, I'm glad y'all put all that on there. Thank you so much. The Hillcrest Seventh-day Adventist Church on the 25th day of May, the year of our Lord, 2013, and received into the Hillcrest Seventh-day Adventist Church of the South Central Conference on this day, officiating Minister Van Dion Griffin and church clerk Shalita Statica Walker. Wanted to hand that to you today. And also we have... Um, smack brand new book on the life of Jesus Christ is entitled The Desire of Ages. And uh, this is written by one of my favorite authors. I call her Aunt Ellen. I want you to enjoy reading that. And we wanted to welcome you here to the best church in the city of Nashville. If you would stand with us at the door and all of these people who are now your relatives. Come on, say amen. They're going to start getting on your nerves. That's what family people do. We're going to hug on your neck at the door and welcome you to our church. Can we give her one more round of applause, everybody? Amen. Amen. So just stand right here with me, and we're going to walk back together. Uh, we're going to pick up Miss Kim on the way, and we're going to pick up Miss Stephanie on that end, and we're going to end at the door and hug some necks, all right? I want to remind you, Elder um, Wise is going to meet on this side with all of us. Notice I didn't say you. All of us, we're going to knock on a few doors. Otherwise, if you would start making your way this way with your packets, and then those who are going to help us with our choir on next week, we're going to ask you to go to the choir stand so that you can talk with one of the girls' names who begin with an L. I don't know which one it is. So. Lorna or Lena. Y'all don't even know. Amen. L. We're going to meet with L in the choir stand, all right? All right. Can we stand and we look to the Lord to be dismissed and someone's going to give us our benediction? Remember, there is prayer meeting on Wednesday night. There will be church on next Sabbath. We're going to stream our Oakwood services. Thank you, Father, for being here with us. Thank you for the words that you have given us. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us both now and forever. Peace be unto you.